Okay, we back in Baltimore with another story. We are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. After killing a federal witness, members of Edmondson Village's NFL gang believe Dominic Gant, a rapper known as Nick Breed, was planning to avenge the murder. To solve the issue, they placed a bounty on him. When Gant was gunned down October 21, 2018, another member of the organization said in a wiretapped phone call, the deed was done. We got the rapper out of there. Federal prosecutors obtained a racketeering indictment, tying reputed members of NFL to four killings as well as drug overdoses across the region that they say trace back to its drugs. According to their guilty pleas, from 2016 to March 2020, Gregory Butler, aka Gotti, Little Dick, or Sags, age 31, was the leader of the NFL enterprise, and James Henry Roberts, aka Bub, age 32, was a member. Together, they participated in its illegal activities with other members, including the NFL Drug Trafficking Organization. The term NFL stands for Normandy, Franklin, and Loudoun, three adjacent streets that run through the Edmondson Village in Baltimore. Members of NFL have social and familial ties to the Edmondson Village neighborhood in southwest Baltimore. During the conspiracy, NFL members distributed large quantities of heroin and cocaine to drug customers and redistributors from Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Butler and Roberts admitted that they obtained narcotics from multiple sources of supply and stored the narcotics in a stash houses that they controlled. Over the course of the charge conspiracy, Butler and Roberts and their co-conspirators distributed over 1 kilogram of heroin and more than 280 grams of cocaine base. Butler also admitted that he and his co-conspirators also distributed more than 400 grams of fentanyl. Butler admitted that the NFL enterprise sold heroin and fentanyl to multiple drug customers who subsequently overdosed and died. Butler agreed that these fatal overdoses were reasonably foreseeable to him, in light of his direct oversight of the enterprise's drug trafficking activities. For example, on about August 16, 2018, Butler coordinated the sale of heroin to customer in Rockville, Maryland, who, later that day, used the heroin and died. Another example, fellow drug dealer Don Bennett was hurt on a wiretapped call, that shit killed my father. God damn, that's crazy, yo. Responded Gregory Butler. Bobby Cannon was another member of the gang. According to his guilty plea, from at least 2016 through March 26, 2020, Bobby Cannon was a member of the NFL criminal enterprise, which engaged in a pattern of criminal racketeering activity including murder, narcotics trafficking and smuggling, illegal firearms possession, bribery, witness intimidation, and witness retaliation. Cannon admitted that he participated in illegal activities with other NFL Enterprise members, including committing two murders and an attempted murder, and distributing large quantities of heroin, fentanyl, and cocaine. One of the murders came to be a major driver of the long-running investigation. This was the June 2018 killing of federal witness Wilbert Epps, who was cooperating after being indicted federally on drug and firearms charges in 2016. Epps, 37, and a woman named Jemiah Harper, 21, were gunned down June 16, 2018, three days before he was scheduled to be sentenced, as they sat on a porch in the 3900 block of Edmondson Avenue, according to law enforcement, Harper was in the wrong place at the wrong time. James Roberts and other NFL members offered money for the murder of Epps, so after Cannon completed the hit, he was paid by Roberts. Nick Breed was an NFL member, as well as an up-and-coming rapper. He had collaborated with some of the city's biggest names, including YBS Cola and Young Moose. His music videos, often filmed on the blocks near where he grew up, garnered millions of views online. As we stated, it was assumed by NFL that rapper Nick Breed was seeking to avenge Epps' death. Now this is weird, as Nick Breed was said to be an advocate for non-violence. If the case was for him to avenge Epps' death, he wouldn't get the chance to, as the 24-year-old Baltimore rapper would be found dead in the city's Allendale neighborhood. Breed, whose given name was Dominic Gant, was found by Baltimore police around 7.30 p.m. on October 23, with multiple gunshot wounds. 
He was pronounced dead shortly after arrival at the University of Maryland Trauma Center. A confirmation message was sent out by his killer to confirm his death. More bloodshed would follow less than two weeks later. DeAndre Preston was an associate of the NFL criminal enterprise. Back in 2015, when he was 19, he had been arrested after officers found a handgun in his possession. That was one thing, but then, there's murder. In late 2018, Roberts learned of a bounty for the murder of 33-year-old Leonard Shelley. As detailed in Preston's plea agreement, in October 2018, Roberts elicited Darren Butler to murder Leonard Shelley so that members of the NFL enterprise could collect a bounty that had been placed on Shelley. Prior to this, Darren Butler had his own run-ins with the law. When he was 17, he had been arrested and charged as an adult in connection with a February double shooting and attempted armed robbery in West Baltimore. The shooting happened on February 15, 2015, in the area of North Smallwood Street and Westwood Avenue. Two men were shot. According to investigators, more than one suspect was determined to be responsible, and arrest warrants were obtained. Darren Butler was taken into custody exactly two months later, at Hickey School for Boys by detectives. However that case turned out, he was out of jail in 2018. On Halloween of that year, Preston, along with Darren Butler, followed Leonard Shelley into a convenience store. Inside, they shot Shelley numerous times, killing him. Police were dispatched to the 200 block of North Monastery Avenue at around 2.15 p.m. to investigate the reported shooting. Following the murder, Darren Butler posted a picture on Instagram of himself holding the bounty proceeds for Shelley's murder. Later, surveillance footage was released to the public in hopes of finding the shooters. Allegedly, NFL had no beef with Shelley, but wanted to collect a bounty offered by someone else. Sometime in late 2018, Cannon was again recruited by NFL to murder another individual in exchange for money and in furtherance of the NFL criminal enterprise. Cannon was a young seasoned criminal. He had committed the double murder we spoke about earlier and had already been to prison on a prior drug charge. For this situation, Cannon planned the murder for several weeks and learned that the individual resided in a halfway house in East Baltimore. On January 4, 2019, Cannon borrowed a car from a female associate in southwest Baltimore and later drove the car to the vicinity of the halfway house, where Cannon waited for the individual. After several hours, Cannon saw the individual on the street and shot the individual multiple times in the arm, back, neck, and buttocks. The individual sustained life-threatening injuries but survived the shooting. Following the shooting, Cannon abandoned the car and notified the female associate, who then falsely reported to the Baltimore police that her car was stolen. Cannon then notified the NFL criminal enterprise that he attempted to murder the individual, but failed to kill him. In April 2019, the FBI arrested several gang members, but not Cannon. On a recorded call following the arrests, Cannon was told to continue distributing drugs for the gang and took over a drug phone members used. Baltimore police officers found Cannon unconscious in a parked van on December 28, 2019. He had a loaded 9mm handgun with an extended magazine containing 21 rounds of ammunition, 18 suboxin stripes, and more than $3,000 in cash. A search of his vehicle uncovered another 52 rounds of 9mm ammunition, along with ammunition for a 45 caliber handgun and assault rifle, and a black ski mask. That search also turned up one bag containing 92.5 grams of suspected heroin and fentanyl, and another bag with 4.3 grams of the same. He was out the game. Cannon admitted he was intending to distribute it. He admitted in his plea agreement that he and his co-conspirators distributed more than one kilogram of heroin, more than 400 grams of fentanyl, and more than 280 grams of crack cocaine. The new indictment traces an array of overdoses from Mount Airy to Prince Frederick, Virginia, some of them fatal, back to the gang's drugs. In the Mount Airy case, a man bought drugs in 2017 and overdosed while driving home. He was revived with Narcan, then continued using at home and fatally overdosed. Prosecutors say Gregory Butler coordinated the sale from jail. The indictment charges five fatal overdoses and nine other overdoses. These are the overdoses currently supported by evidence, but there may be more, according to officials. Gregory Butler and 22 others were first charged in 2019 with distributing heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, and crack cocaine in Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia and West Virginia. Five of the defendants were from West Virginia, two others were from Virginia. 
The number of people charged in the case has since grown to 31, and at least 14 have pleaded guilty, including Bennett, who was recorded saying the group's drugs led to his father's death. Darren Butler already is serving 12 years in state prison after pleading guilty to two handgun cases. In the end, he got to 25 years in federal prison, followed by four years of supervised release for his crimes related to NFL. His accomplice in the Leonard Shelley shooting, DeAnder Preston, also received 25 years in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release. Bobby Cannon, also known as Freaky, age 24, was sentenced to 29 years in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release. As for the leader of NFL, Gregory Butler, he too was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Henry Roberts, or Bub, also received 30 years. Before we go, here is a little bit more info about the crew. This gang had nothing to do with football. NFL actually stands for Normandy, Franklin and Loudon, streets passing through Edmondson Village, where the gang spread terror and murder. It was May of 2018, as children prepared to leave the Mary E. Rodman Rec Center in southwest Baltimore, when shots rang out near the basketball court, killing a 16-year-old boy. It is a war zone, especially when you got guns in the wrong people's hands. My son and my daughter loves to come over here to the wreck and they don't want to come back. Officers found 20 baggies of marijuana and a handgun on the victim. And eventually an indictment brought charges against a member of the NFL gang, which would protect its drug turf by any means necessary. But this about wraps this one up for now, and there might be more information later on down the line this story. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.